Jesus is nailed to a cross. Agony, shame, sacrifice, love. The sinless Lamb of God is bearing the sin of the world. The sky turns dark and the earth shakes. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. His head drops to his chest and Jesus breathes his final breath. His body is laid in a borrowed tomb with a boulder and Roman centurions guarding it. But after three days, the angel rolls the stone away and the guards fall to the ground like dead men. And the same Jesus who was crucified, dead, and buried just days before is doing exactly what he promised. Jesus is walking out of the tomb, alive. Today we celebrate Jesus as the risen King of Kings and the living Lord of Lords. We proclaim him as the victorious one who has conquered sin and death. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. All glory, all power, all majesty, all dominion are his and his alone. And today we declare together with Christ followers around the world that the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything.
Well, good morning, everyone. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Praise the Lord. A warm welcome to everyone this morning, whether you're here in the building or you're joining us online. Uh, it's great that you're part of our worship as a family here this morning. And uh, first of all, I'd just like to express your thanks to the small team that did a wonderful job in making the church look so brilliant this morning, ready for Easter. So to those who donated, to those who turned up and decorated, a very warm-hearted thank you. You've done a super job. Let's give them a round of applause, shall we? Brilliant. Just one or two notices, talk, eat and pray at lunchtime on Tuesday starts again. So if you can make it at that lunchtime, that would be great. The coffee morning on Wednesday is back on this week. So you'd be very welcome for that as well. And um, there are birthdays this week. There's Josiah. Now is Josiah here? He was presented last week. He's not here yet. Okay, well, he, it's his birthday on Friday, and somebody who's a little older than Josiah, Michael, it's his birthday on Saturday. Congratulations, Michael. Please remember a couple of our folk who are not at all well at the moment. Margaret Kerwood is still in hospital, but she's hoping to return home tomorrow. Um, do pray that her pain relief is effective. That's uh, Margaret Kerwood. And Marcia Parsons, do remember her, not at all well, in hospital at this time. Okay, let's pause for a moment before our worship begins. In the dim light of dawn, the city of Jerusalem lay shrouded in silence, its streets bearing the weight of the recent events just days before. Just beyond the city walls, in a garden tomb, lay the body of Jesus wrapped in linen, and the hopes and dreams of his followers are entombed there with him. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James, hearts heavy with grief, make their way to the tomb. As they approach, they discuss the heavy stone sealing its entrance. They wonder how they might enter the tomb to anoint Jesus' body with spices. But when they arrive, they discover that the unimaginable has happened. They find the stone rolled away. Fear grips their hearts as they step inside, only to find that the tomb is empty and that the body of Jesus isn't there. Suddenly, two angels of the Lord appear before them, each wearing white. And with the roar of lightning and thunder, they declare, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Those words echo deeply into their souls, dispelling the darkness of grief and despair. For Jesus, the one they've given their hearts and lives to, is indeed alive. We come this morning as people have come for the last 2,000 years through the ages to, um, to celebrate and to declare that Christ is risen, that he's alive, and to give God the glory for the great thing he has done. That first Easter, the greatest day in history that changed the whole of the future world. And so we come in praise, first of all, as we sing that um, fantastic hymn, Thine be the glory, risen conquering Son, endless is the victory, thou over death 
as one. So please stand with me and join in praise and celebration as we declare how great our God is. son to leave the riches of heaven to come into this world to be with us born at Bethlehem who died on a cross for us and rose again so that we could have that friendship with God and we could have new life in him if that isn't something to praise God for then I don't know what is we're going to praise him as we sing our next song Lord I lift your name on high Lord I love to sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us.
first day, the greatest day in history, the day that changed the course of history and life on planet Earth. And Father, we just thank you that you sought in your wisdom to reach out to the people on this planet and you sent your son into this world. He lived on this earth amongst us for a while and then he died on the cross. He died on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven and so that we could have a friendship with you, a new life in you. Father, we just thank you because yours is the glory, yours is the praise for what you did on that first Easter Sunday. And Father, we just thank you that nothing can ever separate us from your love now. And Lord, we have the victory in you because of what Jesus has done, victory over sin, victory over death. Father, we just praise you because yours is the glory. Amen. Do sit down. Now, the wonderful thing about Shirley Baptist Church is that we have a, a very diverse congregation with all sorts of folk from different parts of the world. So I'm going to ask one or two people who come from different parts of the world to talk about how they celebrate Easter. Is it any different than we do from the UK? So Clint, up you come. And I think if I've got my facts right, Clint comes from Zimbabwe. Anybody else from Zimbabwe here? Anybody from the continent of Africa here? Excellent. Clint, how do Zimbabweans celebrate Easter? Okay, so we all, we all go to church on the Sunday morning. Uh, we all like our Easter eggs. Uh, the ones I miss are the Easter eggs that are covered in marshmallows because they used to have them. <laughs> But anyway, marshmallows, huh? Yes, yes. Uh, ma marshmallow covered egg. But anyway, uh, so after church, we like to have what we call a braai, which is a, a barbecue. So it's one of the things we like to do over Easter because it's a long holiday, long break, and we, we love our, our nyama, which is meat, and we, we put on a barbecue. Fantastic. I've had some of his brie, and it's wonderful. His sidekick's good too, wherever Ronald is. Maria, are you here this morning? Maria? Yes, she is. <coughs> you're looking great this morning, Maria. Thanks. Now, tell us where you're from. I'm from Nigeria. Yep. And do you celebrate Easter differently to us in the UK? So I've never heard about Easter eggs until I think about, I was 27 or something. What, last year? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> um, and so it's nothing about eggs. And I think uh, sometimes some Nigerians fume about if you say send a, an Easter message and you put the eggs in there, and then they're like, it's about Jesus, it's not eggs. Um, it's you know, it's a Nigerian thing because we don't really do eggs for Easter. It's um, for us Easter starts on Friday, Good Friday. So you start your Good Friday with um, no meat products on Friday and just honoring the body of Jesus. And that's just the concept of that. So you can eat every other protein sauce, but no meat. And then Saturday, everyone is like gearing up. And then um, there's like a service. Sometimes um, some churches do a service onto Sunday morning so that Sunday you can stay home because in the family that I grew up in, we always celebrate before, like an eve before the Easter, and we're yeah. like anticipating the reason Christ. Um, and then when I got married, it was a different type of process. So anyway, um, we do a service, and then when it's reason, we bring out the drums, and everyone is going hallelujah, hallelujah. So that's the service that leads on to Easter morning. And then on... Easter Monday, you do your Sunday best, lots of jollof rice, lots of chicken and things like that. Well, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> what are we missing out on? Uh, Maria, before you go, how do you say Christ is risen in Nigerian? Oh, okay, so there are at least 240 odd languages in Nigeria. So which is yours? <laughs> uh -huh. So I speak Yoruba. Okay, Yoruba. Yes, yeah. yes. So when we say Christ is risen, Hallelujah, Jesu Jinde. That means Hallelujah, Jesus is risen. Say it again. Jesu Jinde. Jesu Jinde. Just stay jinde. there. Just, okay, can we say it together? Jesu Jinde. Okay, that's Aruba, yeah? Yoruba. Yoruba. Thank you, Maria.
Christ is risen, so we've had it in Yoruba. What about in Romanian? Christ is risen. Who's going to tell me in Romanian? Cornell. Christos a înviat. And again? Christos a înviat. Okay, in Romanian, Christos and Riyat. And again, Christos and Hallelujah. So that's Romanian. Anybody else? You're getting scared now, aren't you? Are we got an Indian here? Yes. Are you hiding there? Is this Hindi? Hindi or Bengali? No, Bengali. Well, yeah. Okay, Christ is risen. Jishu Uddhar Peche. Oh, that's a difficult one. That's lovely. <laughs> okay, say it again. Jishu Uddhar Peche. Ready? Jishu Uddhar Peche. And again? Jishu Uddhar Peche. That's fantastic. That's Bengali. And Hindi? Indian. Jesus is risen. Can you say that in Hindi? I mean Indian. <laughs> He's got shy, but that's uh, the thoughts there. That's lovely. Anyone else? Yes, hang on a sec. I shall be round to you. In Ghana, we have national language, Chi. They say, Yesu, I'm sorry. And what language is that? Chi. Chi language. Chi language. Yeah. And again, Yesu. Yesu, I'm sorry. Yesu, I'm sorry in Chi. Yeah? Yesu, I'm sorry. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Anyone else? We, we're saying, Kosa, O Yesu, Uvugil. And is that South African? That's South, South African, African is it? Yeah, yeah? Kosa, yeah. Okay, say it again. O Yesu Uvugil. Yesu Uvugil. Love from South Africa. Kenya. <laughs> At, in Kenya, we have 42 tribes, not as many as Nigeria. And I'm going to use the national language, which is Swahili. So we say, Yesu Amefufuka. Say it again, Peter. <laughs> Yesu Amefufuka. Yesu Amafufuka. Praise the Lord. Wow, that's fantastic. Okay. Yeah, we've done Zimbabwe. Yeah. Yeah. We did the language. Didn't we? Oh, you escaped. Zimbabwe. Christ is risen. So in Shona, we say Jesu Wamuka. And again? Jesu Wamuka. So in Shona, Yesu Ramoka. Yesu Ramoka. Ah, Eric. In Filipino, we, uh, we say, Jesu Christo ay buhay. Oh, right. Say it again. Jesu Christo ay buhay. Jesu Christo ay Filipino. Wow. What a wonderful, varied congregation we have. Isn't it great? And we have one Saviour and one Lord. And he is risen. Hallelujah. Okay. okay. Um, I wonder if you can tell me what a symbol is. Would you like to give me a definition of a symbol? Not a symbol you play, Chris. No, I'm not talking about that sort of symbol. Okay, well, let me tell you then, a symbol is something... Oh, okay, you think you know what I know the answer? So what do you think it might be? What do you think a symbol means? Again? A symbol. <laughs> Maybe where you come from? Maybe where you come from? Sort of. Okay, right, a symbol is something which... Um, stands for which represents something else. So, for example, a flag represents a country. So the Union Jack represents the United Kingdom. Jesus, when he shared that last meal with the disciples, used bread and wine as symbols of what was going to happen to him. And sometimes people might have a photograph of a place or a person 
which they take around with them as a symbol to remind them of someone who's special or someone, or a place which is special. So I'd like us to spend a few moments just thinking about Easter and just thinking for a moment about those symbols, those things which remind us about Easter and which help us to celebrate Easter. Now I've got a little Easter board over here which is, um, which I'll turn around, which is looking um, very empty at the moment and I'm hoping that you're going to help me um, fill it up. I would like you to think about as many symbols and as many things that you can think of which help us to remember what Easter is about and also to celebrate Easter. There's some post-it notes out there. You can, you can write a word to, the, to describe it or you can draw a picture of it if you want to. But I'd like you to think about um, the symbols, those things which remind us about Easter and those things which we use to um, celebrate Easter, which remind us about Easter. So we're going to sing a song as we do. There's no, there's no age limit on this activity, so it's not like for any people under eight or anything like that. So anyone in the congregation um, can come out and write something down. Um, if parents want to come forward with children, you're welcome to do that. There's some pens there, there's some post-it notes there. And um, so hopefully you'll come forward and we'll try and see if we can fill that board. While we're doing that, we're going to sing another song. Um, song which is called The Greatest Day in History. Okay, so please come forward and put your ideas um, about those symbols, those things which reminded us about Easter, and those things which we use to celebrate Easter. So we're going to stand this song.
Okay, while they're busy writing, I'm just going to go over and have a look on the board and see what sort of things are... Um... Okay, so the sort of things we've got, Dan, someone's drawn a, a lovely picture of the cross. Um, several people have said that. Um, Talking about the empty tomb, the resurrection, someone's drawn the Easter bunny, someone's talking about new life, victory, hope, and so on. So thank you very much for that. I'm actually really surprised because there was, there was one symbol that I was expecting to be there that just isn't there, actually. Because um, I think when you think about Easter and when you think about symbols, the thing that people quite often think about is the egg, the Easter egg, as a symbol. I'm really surprised the children haven't come up with that, actually. So, the, 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 if you were to go outside and talk to most people, then the symbol that they will mention would be the Easter egg. So I want to um, find out this morning how good you are at being egg experts, okay? So I've got a few questions about eggs that I just want you to um, see if you can answer um, this morning. So here we go. So it's very easy. There's some choices here. So you just have to choose which one you think is the right answer. So, first question is, how many Easter eggs are sold in the UK each year? So if you think it's 50 million, put your hands up. If you think it's 65 million, put your hands up. If you think it's 80 million, put your hands up. Obviously, people know their eggs, don't they, really? You're dead right. It's, um, it's 80 million, so we're going on too far now. You've just seen the answer to the second one, haven't you? <laughs> so, when was the first chocolate egg produced in the UK? Um, if you think it was 1873, a good guess, put your hand up. <laughs> if you think it was 1886, put your hand up. If you think it was 1894, put your hand up. Um, well, it was actually 1873, produced by a company called, some of the older people might remember this, Fry's Chocolate, produced the first one. Okay, so the next one is about the Cavalry's cream eggs, okay? So... So, how many Cavalry's cream eggs which I'm just throwing over the floor here now. Um, how many of these do you think are made each day? Put your hands up if you think it's 150,000. Put your hands up if you think it's 1.5 million. Put your hands up if you think it's 50 million. It's actually 1.5 million. So well over 500 million eggs. If you actually placed those eggs on top of each other, then it would be 10 times the height of Mount Everest. So that's a lot of calories, I think, actually. OK, so the, um, the next question is... The largest chocolate egg made was taller than a giraffe. True or false. So true, put your hands up if you think it's true. Put your hands up if you think it's false. Okay. It's actually true. Uh, the average draft is about five meters, so it's around 16 feet. The, um, the largest chocolate egg, egg ever made was 10.35 meters, so that's well over 30 feet. It was in a place, it was a place called Tosca, in Italy, and it weighed 7,200 kilograms. So if you can think of a bag of sugar, that's, um, my notes tell me, it is 2,800 bags of sugar. That's how heavy it was. Okay. So the most expensive chocolate egg sold, um, was it, if you think it was 70 pounds, then put your hand up. Okay, if it was £700, put your hand up. If you think it was £7,000, put your hand up. 
Some people have obviously expensive taste, don't they? It was, it was in London in 2012. It was an, it was an Easter egg which was covered in gold and um, white flowers, and it took three days to actually construct. Okay, so, moving on to the next one. Oh dear. <laughs> Too, too sensitive, you, you know the answer now, so I'm not going to ask you. So the, the largest Easter egg hunt ever was in Florida. Um, it involved 9,000 children and 500,000 Easter eggs. So I reckon if you were a child looking for an Easter egg, you were onto a pretty good bet of finding a few Easter eggs. I'm going to miss the, um, the next few. I'm going to go through the, um, the next couple quickly. Okay, now you know the answer, Dave. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give up with the technology because it's not working very well. Um, so the first Easter eggs were decorated in what colour? So the choices are red, yellow, blue. So who thinks it was red? Who thinks it was yellow? Who thinks it was blue? It was actually red to represent the blood of Jesus. Okay, and then the last question, you really need to think about this one. Why do we give Easter eggs? Is it because they're easy to hold and eat? Is it because they're seen as a symbol of life? Or is it because people use to fry eggs for breakfast at Easter? So if you think, it, if you think it's because they're easy to hold and eat, then put your hands up. If you think it's a symbol of good life, new life, then put your hands up. If you think it's because they used to fry eggs for breakfast at Easter, then put your hands up. No, you're right. It's actually a symbol of life. So there you have it. The egg is seen very much as a symbol of life. You know, we, we, see, we see chicks emerging from eggs, but basically what the egg does, it reminds us that when the egg is, when the egg is broken, it symbolises the tomb that was opened, that Jesus came out of, and basically gives us new life. And that's something to praise God for. And we're going to do that now as we sing... Um, our next song. It's a song called God, You're Good to Me. You gave me life and set me free. Um, song which just reminds us that um, we have God living in within us because of that greatest day, that first Easter. So let's stand and let's praise God as we sing this song together.
God, you're good to me, gave your life and set me free. <clears throat> a long time ago, when people used to get up and talk about how precious God was to them, we used to call that a burning testimony because the love for God burned in the people's uh, life and you could see it in the way that they were speaking. So I thought this morning we could have a few burning testimonies. So I'm going to ask Moses to come up this morning and also Blessing is going to come up and um, who else? Somebody else. Moses, Blessing, oh and Margaret. Margaret, come along Margaret. Hello Moses. Good morning Mr. John. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you, and yourself? Good man, yes. Now, when we talk about burning, I thought what we could do is I'll light a match. Moses has got the length of the match to tell you what Easter means to him, why it's so special. So are you ready, Moses? Yes, I'm ready. Here we go. Chris, Easter to me means the, a time for us to celebrate the, the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Indeed, do you remember that he said that he will destroy the temple in one day and he's going to build it in three days. Also, is to celebrate the, the hope we have as Christians. Because indeed, his death and resurrection has actually bring a hope and a new life for us. Not only does he bring hope, he brings hope for those of us who have lost loved ones in one way or the other. As a result of that, we may like, are they going to resurrect or not? Because Christ has died and resurrected. Well done. Very <laughs> he gives good. us hope. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you. Blessing. Blessing. You have the length of this match to tell us what Easter means to you. Easter is simply celebrating the birth, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 20, but now Christ is risen and Jesus has become the firstborn, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Hallelujah, Jesus is alive. Death has lost his victory and the grave has been denied. Jesus lives forever. He's alive, he's alive. Church, this is the hallmark and the hope of our Christian faith. Jesus is the reason for the Easter celebration. Hallelujah. Amen. Very good. Thank you. John to light the match. Yes, you've got to be louder and f louder and faster than blessing. Oh, that's a lot of thought. <clears throat> I can't strike the match. Okay. Here we go then, Margaret. I get challenged every day. People say to me, how can you possibly believe in something that you've never seen, someone you've never seen? And I say, I wasn't there when the stone was rolled away. I did look into that empty tomb. But that risen Christ is with me every day of my life. He guides me, he provides for me, he protects me. He calls me daughter, he gives me joy, he makes me laugh. And this is personal to me because yes, it's the risen Lord, but it's my risen Lord. Well done, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. You're right, Margaret, very good. A reflection are going to sing to us now as part of our worship. And in a sense, this is a burning testimony too, because it speaks on that day, that special day. So enjoy reflection.
Thank you very much, Reflection. That was great. So Kevin's been asking you some questions this morning. I wonder if any of you have ever seen that TV program, Would I Lie to You? You know that one? Yeah? Well, um, I'm going to give you a couple of um, statements which uh, I'd like you to tell me if you think they're a truth or a lie. So uh, here's the first one. Okay, so um, the uh, Emirates airline has designed a triple-decker plane, not just a double-decker, but it's a triple-decker plane, and apparently you can now get first class, you can get business class, and now actually on the third, um, there's economy class obviously, but there'll be privileged access to the third access uh, floor and there'll be a small swimming pool in this plane there'll be a games room and a gym and they hope to have this um, plane available in 2027 do you think that is truth or a lie how many of you think it's true well, quite a few of you very good even with a pool and taking off <laughs> and how many of you think it's a lie you, uh, you're right, it's a lie, it's a fake. How about this one then? Uh, tomorrow, the 1st of April, is International Pillow Fight Day. And apparently there's a call on the website for fellow warriors of nap time shenanigans. This is the day, that's tomorrow, when you raise your fluffy pillows high, charge into the streets, and together you will carry your bed pillows of all sizes and thump as many people as you can in noble combat. This increasingly popular event started in London. It's now spread to Vancouver in Canada and has spread to many other cities like San Francisco, Boston, Copenhagen, Paris, virtually every major city in Europe. If you think that's true, would you put your hand up? Very few. How many of you think it's a lie? Most of you. It's true. <laughs> International Pillow Fight Day tomorrow. Now, sometimes it's not easy to identify the truth from fiction. And so when we hear the Easter story, the story of Jesus dying and more incredibly rising from the dead, do you think that's real or do you think it's fiction? Did it really happen? Because you see, if you don't believe in the resurrection, if it was a fake, our faith is futile. We can't sing a song like Reflection has just sung. We may as well give up now. As it says in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 14, it says, Christ has not, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is our faith. No resurrection, no hope. 
So let's just walk our way through the Easter story from what we can remember. And you've used symbols, haven't you? You've put some symbols up on the notice sheet. So do help me uh, about this. So what do you think, what do you think this represents? Yes, what does the bread represent? Yes. The body of Christ, that's right. And when did, you, when did we learn that Jesus said, this is my body? That's right, at the Last Supper, didn't he? He broke the bread and he gave a piece to each of his disciples. So that's one of the symbols of Easter, isn't it? The bread. Okay. Now, in front of you, you should all have a stone. Would you like to hold up your stone? Yeah. That's right. Now, after the Last Supper, Jesus went into a garden. Anybody remember what the name of the garden was? Gethsemane. That's right. And he prayed to God. And it was a terribly hard prayer because he was human. He was almost saying, actually, if I'm going to die and I'm going to die on a cross, this is almost too much for me. And, you know, if it's your will, Lord, take take this away but actually he knew that he had to do it because of his love for us and uh, the bible says it was almost as if he was sweating drops of blood because the prayer was so hard it was so hard like a stone and maybe you hold your stone this morning and think of things in your life which are so hard for you to deal with so hard and maybe in a quiet moment you ask God to help you okay now what about this what about these what are these nails that's right how do, how's this part of the Easter story yes Well done, that's right. Jesus died on the cross and he was nailed to the cross. Can you imagine having nails punched through your hands and your feet? But that's a symbol of Easter. And uh, he died on the cross. Now what about this? If I take the top off of this, Anybody tell me what it is? Can you smell this? Anybody know what that is? Anybody know what that is? Yeah, yeah. What's that? What's that smell? I don't recognize the smell. You don't recognize the smell? Have a go. I know what it is. What is it? It's not wine. Vinegar, that's right. Yes, vinegar. How's vinegar part of the Easter story? Can anybody think of a, a time during the Easter story when there was Pete? It was put on a sponge held up to Jesus as he was on the cross. That's right. It was put on a sponge as Jesus was hanging on the cross just before he died. And... Uh, the soldiers particularly wanted to give him something to drink. So you've got nails, you've got vinegar, you've got the tears of Jesus' friends standing round the cross, watching the one that they worshipped and followed for three years, dying and giving up his life. That's right. Okay, what about... This symbol here. Yeah, what's this? Yes. Sorry? Burial clothes. That's right. They wrap the body in burial clothes. So a man named Joseph of Arimathea came and uh, took the body away and wrapped Jesus' body in burial clothes. That's right. So these are a symbol of Easter.
Now, Kevin was talking about something you didn't put up on the board, which is an Easter egg. That's right. Yes. And of course, what happened on the third day when... Uh, that's right. Jesus rose from the dead. And Good Friday, and all that happened on Good Friday was smashed to bits because of his glorious resurrection. Now, we're going to have a reading this morning, and uh, Clint and his family are going to come and do a reading for us. Uh, and you can hear about what happened when Mary came to the tomb. We're going to start slightly earlier and catch on with the story. <clears throat> Where's the mic? Oh. Okay. This was done to make the scriptures come true. Not one of his bones will be broken. And there is another scripture that says, People will look at him who they pierced. After this, Joseph, who was from the town of Arimathea, asked Pilate if he could take Jesus' body. Joseph was a follower of Jesus, but in secret because he was afraid of the Jewish authorities. Pilate told him he could have the body, so Joseph went and took it away. <clears throat> Nicodemus at first had gone to see Jesus at night, went with Joseph, taking with him about 30 kilograms of spices, a mixture of myrrh and aloes. The two men took Jesus' body and wrapped it in linen with the spices, according to the Jewish custom, of preparing the body for burial. There was a garden in that place where Jesus had been put to death, and in there was a new tomb when no one had ever been buried, since it was the day before the Sabbath, and because the tomb was close by, they placed Jesus' body there. Thanks, Thanks be to be to God. God. Praise, Praise the Christ, Christ our Lord. The, <clears throat> the empty tomb. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the entrance. She went running to Simon Peter and the other disciples whom Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and the other disciple went to the tomb. The two of them were running, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and saw the linen wrappings, but he did not go in. Behind him came Simon Peter, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth which had, been, which had been round Jesus' head. It was not lying with the linen wrappings, but was rolled up by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture which said that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb and saw two angels there, dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at his feet. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? <laughs> they have taken my Lord away and I don't know where they have put him. Then she turned round and saw Jesus standing there. But Woman. he did not know what it was. But, sorry, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Rabbani, teacher. Mary. Do, 
Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet gone back up to the Lord, to the Father, but to go to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to him, to him my Father and their Father, my God and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. So we've just heard in our Gospel reading how Mary, thinking that Jesus was the gardener, said, you know, I've, they've taken away my Lord. And it wasn't until he said Mary that she realised who he was. So Mary's Good Friday was smashed when Jesus said Mary to her. She recognised who he was and her heart was filled with joy and despair and grief were pushed aside as she realised it was her Lord that lived. She was now full of love for the Lord and instead of being in despair, she had real hope. Now, that's all very well for Mary, but what about everyone else? Because at this point, she's the only witness to see Jesus alive. If you look at that reading, she was the only one person to see Jesus alive. What about all the others? What about all his friends? Well, if you come back to church over the next few weeks, you'll hear more stories of how the resurrection became real and true to many of Jesus' friends. But here's a sneak preview. First of all, Next week you'll hear about two people on the road to Emmaus. Suddenly they were joined by Jesus. And uh, it's when he broke bread that their Good Friday was smashed. Then there were the disciples who were in the upper room, really not believing very much that Mary could have been telling them the truth and uh, still very confused and very bewildered until Jesus stood amongst them and said, peace be with you. And their Good Friday was smashed. And then there was Thomas, wasn't there? Thomas, one of the disciples who said, well, I wasn't there and I don't believe that he's alive. You may say all that, but that's just a figure of your imagination. I can't believe that the Lord is alive. Not until I see the nail prints in his hands will I believe. And then Jesus came and stood among them again. Thomas was there and he held out his hands and he said to Thomas, put your hands, put your fingers in the nail prints of my hands. And Thomas believed. And Thomas's Good Friday was smashed. And then there was Peter. Peter who had betrayed Jesus by denying him three times when the cock crew. Do you remember that? And then he was obviously struggling with that as Jesus died on the cross. And even though Jesus was alive, Peter really couldn't deal with the guilt that was surrounding him until one day on the beach when Jesus appeared to them and said to Peter, do you love me? And he asked him three times and Peter said, you know, Lord, I love you. And, Peter, and Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep. And Peter became the rock and his Good Friday was smashed forever. You know, for us, our Good Fridays have been smashed because we have forgiveness for the brokenness and the failure of our own lives. What we call sin, those things where we live for ourselves, 
that's been forgiven because of Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross. We've become friends with God because by Jesus dying on the cross, that relationship between us and God has been restored. And we have become again children of God with a lovely relationship with our Father because of what Jesus has done. That sin has been taken away. The barrier between God and us has been taken away. And we now can be again friends with God. And then we can follow. We can follow Jesus because he's alive. And he can give guidance to our lives. And we don't have to live a confused life wondering which way to go in a world that is so broken and so damaged. He can show us the way because he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the God who created us. We can follow him. And finally, we can have fantastic hope because death is not the end. Death has been defeated because of Calvary. We have fantastic hope for the future. And one day, our bodies will be resurrected too and we will live forever with God in a place as reflection of just sung where there's no dying, no sadness, no suffering and no pain. That's the fantastic message of Easter. Now you can eat this chocolate when you go for coffee in a moment. But uh, the wonderful news is that Jesus is alive, that death has been defeated, that we've got the four Fs, we've got forgiveness, we're friends with God, we can follow Jesus and we have fantastic hope. Now as an act of response, what I would want to encourage you today is that you've got a stone in front of you and that represents the hard things in your life. And maybe because it's Easter day, you would like to bring that stone and put it on the table underneath the picture of the empty tomb. Maybe there are things in your life where you're anxious, where there are challenges in your life where you're not sure how you're going to cope with it. Maybe there's sickness in your life. Maybe there's a friend of yours who's very sick. Maybe there's grief in your life. But you know, Good Friday has been smashed. And uh, our prayer is that the promise and the fantastic hope of Easter might allow the, the risen Lord Jesus to walk with you through those difficult days. So we're going to have a pause now. Reflection are going to play some music. If you want to come and bring your stone and place it under the empty tomb on the table, now is the time to do that as we respond to the joy of Easter Day.
Uh, let's pray together. If you still feel you want to come forward, that's fine, but I'm going to pray. Father God, we, we do thank you that you're the living God. And uh, we praise you once more for the great news, the fantastic news of Easter. The triumphant resurrection from the dead of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know we have forgiveness, we have friendship, we have following you in, in a new life, and we have fantastic hope for the future. And we praise you for the truth that your love could not be kept down and your purpose could not be defeated. Your mercy could not be destroyed. Lord, teach us that what was true then is true today, that nothing can stand in the way of your power and your grace. And Father, we all face Good Fridays when life is so hard and hope seems so distant. And we remember those who are grieving today. We remember those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We remember those who are ill. We think of, the two Mar we think of Margaret and Marcia, those who are facing difficult challenges in life. May your power, may your grace that brought about Easter Day fill us and give all of us the confidence to trust you, confident that your will will be done and that your kingdom will indeed come one glorious day. And we ask that through the wonderful name of the living Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay, we're going to close our service this morning by singing this last song, which is just a celebration. He has risen. And if uh, the children would like to come on the stage, I've got something that you could blow and play to celebrate that Jesus has risen. Let's stand and sing together.
another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Fantastic. Well done. You can go back to your mum and dad's now if you like. Yeah, that's really good. You very well.